In Mongolia's ancient capital, Karakorum, an old faith has been reborn. This was the country's largest Buddhist monastery until the communists closed it down. Now there's religious freedom, it's been reopened and restored. But in the modern capital, Ulaanbaatar, a new faith is spreading even faster. Religious freedom also brought in Christian missionaries from the West. Tens of thousands are now converting on the promise of salvation and the hope of prosperity. The Bible teaches you how to create wealth. I mean, have you ever met a poor Jew? They're hard to find. Now Buddhist leaders are crying foul in this race for hearts and souls. Then, uh, some cases, they also they, uh, use money for <laughs> missionary work. <laughs> that is not, not nice. That's not, not proper. It's no surprise that Buddhists are feeling a little sensitive. Since the 13th century, Buddhism was as much a part of Mongolia as horsemanship and nomadic wandering. But for most of the past century, Buddhists risked their lives to keep the faith alive. In 1920, the Soviet Union swallowed up Mongolia. The communists allowed only one religion, the worship of Marx and Lenin. They soon began their brutal pursuit of the workers' paradise. When the Mongolian puppet government failed to bring Buddhism into line, the Soviet dictator Stalin decided to wipe it out once and for all. On a fateful day in 1937, secret police swooped on the Karakoram Monastery. It was the start of a bloody purge that would kill 17,000 monks. When the KGB came to Karakoram, Dashton Dog was just 17. His youth saved his life. Dashton Dog was sent into the army. The adults were shot or sent to Siberian gulags. Almost none returned. The military took over Karakorum. Hundreds of others were razed to the ground. For the next 50 years, Buddhists risked death or imprisonment to practice their religion. Namkai Jansan became a Buddhist monk by stealth, enrolling as a religious scholar. But in 1990, as the Soviet Union collapsed, Mongolia finally won independence. Its new democratic constitution guaranteed freedom of religion. It's up to a person whether to believe or not to believe in the existence of God or any religion. Culturally and, uh, and mentally, of course, Buddhism is very much a part of Mongolian identity. But no sooner had the Soviets left than the Americans arrived, offering a very different way to paradise. Christianity never destroys a culture. It will remove things from a culture that are holding it back, that are destroying it, essentially, that are killing its people, that are making life miserable. But it will give a Mongolian spin, as it were, on the Gospels. Yeah, let's go down the hall here and have a look at our newsroom. Paul Schwarzenruber has spent seven years in Mongolia running Eagle Television, named after the American Eagle. 
It's funded by American Christians and it promotes American-style democracy and religion. So are you a, are you a Christian station or you're a, a business-oriented station? We're a joint a... venture, so we're both. The American side has Christian interests at heart, but is very, very interested in objective, unbiased news. And you have a religious program as well? We have a religious talk show, right, that uh, discusses current events in view of uh, religion. Um, occasionally, it's, it's, spun, it's hosted by Christians. Its news broadcasts are interspersed with biblical messages and evangelical appeals. Oh, every so often you'll see a scripture pop up on the screen. can happen anytime, anywhere. Maybe not in our news block because that's sold out with lots of advertising, but... <laughs> Buddhists complain this sort of foreign funding has given Christians an unfair advantage. <laughs> And Buddhists face some flashy competition. One of Eagle TV's most popular shows is a Christian music program aimed directly at Mongolian youth. When all is on the line. There's a steady mix of American Christian rock. Or would you be ashamed of Jesus' name? If loving God was the cry. And it's full of young people testifying how Christianity has given meaning to their lives. The end of communism has left an economic and spiritual void. Teenagers have freedom their parents could scarcely imagine. But none of the security Mongolians once enjoyed and little to believe in either. Some say Christianity can solve all their problems. The Bible teaches you how to create wealth. And I know there are a lot of Christians that say that's that's blasphemy, <laughs> but it's there. I mean, have you ever met a poor Jew? They're hard to find. And, and the reason Christians, some of them are in poverty is because they're, they're ignoring the Old Testament. <laughs> I don't follow all the laws of the Old Testament. There's some good stuff in there on how to create wealth. It's an attitude that angers the highest levels of government. Yes, you are poor now because you are Buddhist. You stop becoming a Buddhist, you will be developed from tomorrow. You want to learn English, English language is based on Bible. So uh, give up your uh, Buddhist uh, language and uh, uh, become a Christian and then automatically you will learn English language. So this kind of strange manipulation of the, uh, of the, um, of the mind of people is not very much uh, uh, appreciated. But the Prime Minister is speaking for an older generation. Most of the converts to Christianity are under 30. This is the Hope Church in Ulaanbaatar, one of more than 200 evangelical churches in Mongolia. Even its prayer meetings attract scores of teenagers. Compared to the ancient rituals of Buddhism, they see Christianity as new, Western and cutting edge. The atmosphere can be more like a pop concert. 16-year-old Bola Chime became a Christian after her friends told her about an exciting new religion. She says it's changed her life. And there's an element of teenage rebellion. 
манай ээж анх нөгөө нэг би одоо байсан амар нөгөө нэг эсэргүүцд байсан хаа би тэрийг тэгээд амар нэг амар ингээл чи сүм дүнд яваад юу гэдэг юм те чи гэсэн дэ гэртээ байдаг хань чи хим ийм нөгөө үнтэй цагаад хий хоос юм те яг зориулаад яг энэ тэгсэн дээр чи нама уншигч юм те гичэл нама хийж юм өдөр болон яг энэ нама уншаалах библи уншаад The church has become their social life as well as their shared mystery. Today it's a picnic and strawberry hunt just outside Ulaanbaatar. What's striking is that there are no foreigners in sight. Even the pastors are now all Mongolian. Mugi only became a Christian eight years ago at the age of 19. The foreign missionaries who converted her sent her to Singapore to train as a church leader. That is really impacting. That is drawing a lot of people, and people are seeing that. Hey, it's not just a, a foreign thing. Our locals are talking about this. Our locals are really thinking about this, and really challenging people to come to Christ. And two or three times a week, they're out spreading the word. <laughs> Энэ нэг талаар. Энэ нэг талаар байхгүй. Нэгтэр нь болоод бас нэг орчлон ертөнцийн эзэн танд хайртай бүгд өөргөө бичлэн танилцуулахын тулд таныг бүтээсэн. Тэгээд гэтэл түүнийг таны мэтгээд юу саад болт болдог вэ гэд. While some churches like the Mormons still use foreign missionaries, most have already been taken over by locals. They have little trouble persuading strangers to join them. Buddhism has no such evangelical tradition. But it does have one charismatic figure who can outshine any missionary, the Dalai Lama. He's been trying to get to Mongolia for most of the past 18 months. But thanks to pressure from China, Russia has refused to grant him a transit visa to allow him to fly there. From distant India, he's been watching Mongolia's Christian awakening with increasing disquiet. Whenever you say, I give some Buddhist explanation in the West, I always made clear, uh, Westerners, like European or American, better to keep their own tradition, uh, in, in religious faith, like uh, Christianity or Judaism, and to some extent Muslim. It is better to keep their own tradition. rather than change to in, into new religion so similarly like tibetan and mongolian traditionally buddhist so better keep their own tradition this is my feeling but sometimes foreign christians are the only people mongolians can turn to for help because a lot of us are small but certainly the vast majority of christian of groups a groups here are christian based or Alex Snary is an aid worker from a small Pentecostal church in New Zealand. He's lived in Mongolia for seven years, much of it in a poor village, in conditions as bleak as any of his neighbours. His group, Asian Outreach, runs programs to help Mongolians become self-sufficient. Today he's visiting a crippled herdsman Gulbata who sank into desperate poverty after independence. Asian outreach lent him enough livestock to build up his own herd and look after himself. Our job here is not not to preach to people. You can say we show a practical side of Christianity. We we take love thy neighbor seriously and uh what we want to do is we want to be an example to people here. So if people are interested in Christianity, they can approach us, we can talk about it, but we're not here to uh to push a certain religious point of view but some buddhists find that hard to accept өвчтэй зовлонтой болсон тэгээ олон эдийн засгийн байдлаас ажилтгалаад хүмүүс христосын одоо сугалралт христосын сүмрэн үйл хэвчэж байна тэгээ энэ бол зөвхөн өнгөний энийг бол хичнээн дэлгэрлээ 
хичнээн христүүд орж ирж монгол дэлгэрлээч гэсэн буддын шишин бол монгол хүний сэтгэл зүрхэнд бат тай байсаар байх юм. Тийм болохоор энд гой зовх асуудал байхгүй. But Christianity has already jumped from the cities to the grasslands. Alex took me to meet a remote nomad couple. This group has been helping them to rebuild their flock after two bad winters. Edena Sarand and her husband Kushku are both Christians, but not because of Alex. They converted after friends told them of Christianity's power. They believe God has protected them from losing their entire flock. I'm just asking about the last winter, mm -hmm. and he said they had 38 horses before the winter, now they have 15 left. Right. They had uh, 40, uh, 41 cows. Mm -hmm. 11 cows left. So they're just praying about what to do with their future. Losing half their, their flock would try the faith in any religion, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's, but I mean, her attitude is, is praise God, we still got half a flock. There are many, many people around here have got nothing. Yeah. And uh, so they count themselves blessed, yeah. and uh, even having gone through such a difficult time. Yeah. Edina Saran sees Buddhism as superstitious religion. But God, she says, is a hard fact. Mm. Ah, Borkhne Surga do do. Yek Borkhne ta yerikat. Unu teri Surga do yek mene amdal thirk jo jo chhe toh khat ter thirk chhe tik. Bukhun evik tik puti tik wah koyo. A decade ago, there were thought to be just twenty Christians in the entire country. But Christianity is spreading so fast it no longer needs foreign missionaries or even churches. The Buddhist faith that survived Stalin is falling victim to freedom and a new culture is taking hold of a desperate people in an ancient land. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah.